Good morning, my diamonds and my Teletubbies. You know, it is so important for us to listen to our elders because they are filled with so much wisdom. Now, you have a lot of people that say, well, I could always go on the Internet and listen to other older people, what have you. But you know what I notice when it comes to the value of more refined and more seasoned ones or our elderly ones is that Every one of us is going to become more refined and more seasoned in life, older, if you will. I hate to use that word older or elderly, but it is what it is. And the beauty of the more refined ones is that when your joints start to ache and you have certain pains, you can go to the refined ones in your family because they have your same genes and you're biologically a lot similar. And, you know, you have like the same things going on based on your genetics, and they could tell you the things that really work and the things that don't and what they find to be very helpful. So that way you can avoid a lot of the scams and a lot of the lies that are being told. Right now, I'm listening to this um, this uh, seasoned gentleman here and he's speaking truth. And you have a lot of people who after listening to him, their eyes are filled with tears because he's speaking the truth. Let me share this with you and then we'll come back and talk about it. And I also want to share something else with you, uh, with, you know, who, uh, my baby, um, sovereign woman, and she explains why she don't ever want to get married. You know, marriage is definitely a lot of work. It really, really is. But anyway, we'll come back and talk about it. Okay, here we go. So I have the black woman wouldn't be no hoe if a man wasn't no hoe. We made the black woman like the black woman is. We have sex with her friends, we have sex with her sisters. We so disrespectful to us people, she got to put up with this shit. Cause you paying the bill. Our black sisters got to be the strongest woman it is on planet Earth. Why? She all by herself. She ain't got no man. A man don't know what to tell her. He can't talk to her. All a man is trying to do is have sex with her. She don't want to hear that, especially after she and has some babies and things like that. And the black man is sorry. He's not helping the black woman. He ain't helping his mama. So the black woman got a real hard job in America. She's our backbone, point blank. They look boy ain't no man. They man ain't no man. They're out here all by themselves, struggling every day by themselves, trying to take care of this nigga here, yeah, his mama, by herself trying to take care of boys. My mama, all our mamas, they have a hard time and we don't even say thank you. We wrong. The black woman ain't wrong. The black woman wouldn't be no hoe if a man wasn't no hoe. We made the black woman like the black woman is. How can we disrespect the black woman? If it wasn't for the black woman, we wouldn't be here. The black woman Hello. wouldn't be no hoe. This man, he spoke nothing but facts. But you notice the point that I really, uh, well, that's one thing I totally disagree with him. When he says that the black woman or the ebony woman, she doesn't have anyone. She doesn't have anyone to lead her or to protect her. That's not true. Like I'm, I'm going to show you right now. I'm going to prove my point. It's just a matter of black women learning how to trust and depend on the right person. Let me show you evidence. Notice here what it says at Isaiah chapter 54 verse 5. Your real husband is the one who made you. His name is the Lord All-Powerful. The Holy One of Israel is your what? Your protector. And he is the God of all the earth. So when it comes to saying that black women or women, period, don't have anyone who can guide them, protect them, provide for them, teach them. That is so not true. It's just that women, for some reason, and they say that they're Christians, but I don't know, you know, and, and I was married, like I said, 2.5 times. Yeah, I was. You know, I, I was also raised in a Jehovah Witness cult. So that that that's a lot, but that's a whole nother video. But you know, when you put your trust in God and Jesus Christ and you depend on them 
to do the best for you, you don't have to worry. Like you see these women who have husbands. These husbands are not providers. They're not protectors. They damn sure can't lead. The first thing out of their mouth is submissive. You know what freaks me out about that when it comes to these men? These men are not even Christians. They don't live a Christian lifestyle. And you'll notice how they never quote Ephesians chapter 5 verse 21 where it says we ought to submit to one another. So it's not like we don't have someone to protect, provide, lead, and teach. We do. It's just a matter of putting your trust and knowing that you don't have to worry because every time you worry, you keep implying that Jesus is not big enough. He's not smart enough. He's not powerful enough. He's not loving enough to take care of you. So a lot of uh, women, black women, Asian women, or European women, they, 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 they put their trust more in a human being, an imperfect man who's shallow, superficial, and very fickle. You know, I will do my, uh, my, my sovereign uh, woman on another video because I don't want this to be too long. I want it to fit both on the TikTok and my YouTube channel. And when you go over 10 minutes, it just don't fit on TikTok, all of it. So we do have someone we can depend on. But another point that I, I, I appreciate that he brought out, he was talking about how black women wouldn't be hoes. They are the ones who are hoes. How are you going to call a, a woman a whore when you're a bigger whore? Like Jesus Christ said, when they wanted to stone to death the woman who committed adultery with a man, they wanted to kill the woman, but let the man live. But Jesus Christ said, oh, hell no. Uh-uh, that ain't happening. So he let the woman off the hook. He said, let the one, the first one cast a stone. If you are without sin, go ahead and cast the first stone and hit this woman. I want to see you. Not one person could throw a stone. So black men or men, period, stop calling women whores, honey, when you are bigger whore. And I think we all know this day and age, you can never take a, make a husband into a, a whore into a husband. But the point I also appreciate it is you notice when he said this. Let me play it again so I can stop on that point. Like the black woman take a look. Listen. The black woman wouldn't be no hoe if a man was no hoe. We made the black woman like the black woman is. We have sex with her friends. We have sex with her sisters. We so disrespectful to us people. She got to put up with this shit because you paying the bill. I'm That's the part I wanted to stop. We'll sleep with her friends, her sisters, even your cousins and your brothers. Why? Why are they so disrespectful? Because he's paying all the bills. Okay. That's why I keep telling women, I am a 50-50 girl because when a man is paying all the bills, as you've heard this refined seasoned gentleman say, when he's paying all the bills, he feels he can disrespect you. Now, if this man who's paying all the bills, he gets you nice and comfortable. Let's say a good year, 18 months. He's got you comfortable. He's paying for everything. Everything is gravy and you're comfortable. And now he says, you know what? I'm bringing home a female because I pay all the bills up in here. I want to lay it with somebody else. He could go right in the living room or go in the bedroom, close the door and make you sit outside in the living room while he's screwing somebody else. He pays the bills. Truth be told, is his place. I don't care if your name is on the lease and all the above or what have you, because if he pick up and leave, you go ahead. Let's see if you what, what good is your name on the lease when you can't you ain't got no money to pay for nothing. I'm going to always be a 50 50 girl when it comes to the rent, the utilities. The Wi-Fi and the food always, baby, because anytime a man is paying all the bills, he gets to have all the say so. He gets to disrespect you any way he chooses to. So you go ahead and keep listening to this sprinkle, sprinkle and all these other females who are nothing like the Proverbs 31 wife. She's described as the perfect and the capable wife. And you'll notice she was not no stay at home mother. She was not no stay at home wife. She was out there in the workforce. She was out there being a mover and a shaker, making her own money, buying property, buying land. She was into real estate. She knew how to manage a household by hiring, uh, what did she have, maid servants. Because when you read Proverbs 31, it says that the capable wife, she got up early in the morning to cook for her maid servants. So she knew how to manage a household, baby. 
So for all these women who think, oh, I want to be a stay at home mother. That makes me a good woman. No, it does. It makes you a very unwise, unwise woman. Is there something wrong with being a stay at home mother and a wife? We're not living in 1940 or 1960. So for 2024, that's not very wise. And Proverbs says, be wise, my child, and make my heart rejoice, Jesus says. You're not being wise when your whole survival depends on a man. Uh-uh, that's not smart, not at all. So ladies, follow the scriptures. And you don't have to depend on no man. And when this man here, this uh, uh, um, uh, seasoned man says that she don't have nobody, she's out here all by herself. Yeah, if she doesn't have any trust in Jesus and she don't depend on Jesus and she don't care nothing about Jehovah, then yeah, she is out here all by herself. But she don't have to be. She's choosing to do that. I've been married, like I said, 2.5 times, baby. And I have friendships, healthy relationships. I have friendships from the time when I was 16. 16, this is over 40 years that I've had my friendships. So I know what healthy relationships are all about. Three of my besties, and they're still in my life, very much active in my life. Where's these husbands at? And we know what the divorce rate is. The divorce rate now is over 50%. The separation rate is like 40. Put that together and that's 90 or over 90%. So, so miss me with all of this marriage and depending on a man and no, no. These women are miserable. Let me listen to dude again. Come on, sir. Educate these fools. So I have the black woman wouldn't be no hoe if a man was no hoe. We made the black woman like the black woman is. We have sex with her friends, we have sex with her sisters. We so disrespectful to us people, she got to put up with this shit. Cause you paying the bill. Our black sisters got to be the strongest woman it is on planet Earth. Why? She all by herself. She ain't got no man. A man don't know what to tell her. He can't talk to her. All a man is trying to do is have sex with her. She don't. Yeah, that's another point that I wanted to bring about. When you have these men who want to say submissive, you know, a lot of women, We personally me, I would like to have a man who's strong enough and he's smart enough and he's wise enough. That would be great. The reason why you have a lot of ebony women who are not submissive is because we have men who don't know how to lead. You're not leaders and I'm not trying to offend, bully or tear anyone down. But the truth is the truth. Do the research. Black men are not good leaders. That's why they have a, 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 a nation and a group of women who are. It's hard for us to be submissive to what? A man who don't know how to lead. A man who is on Satan, the devil's team. A man who do more to make Satan's heart rejoice, Lucifer's heart rejoice, than you do to make God and Christ's heart rejoice. What do you do for God and Christ? Talk to me, sir. Let me see what your ministry is all about. Since you want to always go and use that scripture, be submissive, be submissive. Show me your ministry. How many Bible studies are you conducting, sir? With a male Bible study group. You know, the Bible says that you're supposed to go out there preaching and teaching and making disciples, preaching the good news of the kingdom, preaching about Jesus Christ reigning as king. And when he knocks out all these governments, Daniel chapter two, verse 44, show me your ministry, sir. And I want to talk to you also most respectfully, sir, about the fruitage of the spirit. How many of those do you display? Okay, how many fruitages of the spirit are there? That's how you could tell a man when he says he wants a Christian wife. Are you a Christian man? Are you living a Christian lifestyle? Or are you like the Pharisees, hypocrites? You're just looking to uh, 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 play your agenda. You only care about executing your agenda. What's going to work for you? It's not about us. It's not about family. It's about you and your selfishness, which is why. You see ebony women refusing to submit. Submit to what? 
You don't know how to lead. You see these other races of women, they're more submissive to some extent, but they're raising up. Even they are raising up now because they're starting to wake up and say, hold up, hold up. I will not let this dude continue to treat me like I'm subhuman, like I'm less than human. Are you kidding me? So women are starting to wake up and the other races of women are starting to look at ebony women with much respect. Now they understand, especially after they've experienced a black man. Now these other races of women are waking up to say, you know what? I understand now what the black women or the ebony women are talking about. We get it. We see why these women have to be so strong because they don't have no men. They have broken little boys who refuse to grow up. They refuse to put in the work to get the therapy and the support group and the Bible study that they need. Because let me tell you something that I've learned. I'm, I'm going to share this with you. Therapy to me is useless. It's useless. Anytime you don't do prayer, Bible study, and then therapy, and then you have to have a support group. Those are the four things you need to really, really help your healing and for it to be speed, it is speeded up. It's got to be prayer, Bible study, therapy, and a support group. And you don't even have to leave the comfort of your home to find support groups this day and age. Because just going into therapy, talking to a stranger, let me let me share something with you right 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 now. The, the, yeah, therapist. No, no. This is going. Let me show you. I'm gonna share something else with you. This is a video. I don't know if you're familiar with this young lady, and I love her so much. Because when I first saw her videos, I was like, oh my God, this is so not the way a lady's supposed to conduct herself. She's way too hard. She's too masculine. She's too rough. But then when I looked at, what is that, Flat on Vlad or something, I listened to this girl's life story and how she's been raped. She had a brother beat her up, punch her in her lip. That's where she got the scar. People think it's herpes, but she's been through so much. And that's why I made a video on my TikTok here. It says, this is why it's so important not to judge anyone. Scar lip have been through so much. I put, I love this girl because I had no idea until you listen to this story and you got to listen to a lot of these rappers, like these black girls who are just totally degrading themselves as far as I'm concerned. But there's, there's a history behind all that. Let me share this with you. And this is why I say therapy alone. It's not going to do it, baby. You need prayer, Bible study. I conduct Bible studies free. We could do it on WhatsApp. You need Bible study and then you need therapy and then you have to find a support group. That's what she's going to need. I wish I could reach out to her and offer her study. I'm going to give it a shot. Hey, what's the worst that could happen? Really? Just check this out. Come on, girlfriend. As a black girl in the system, none of you. As a black girl in the system, I was taught to hate myself. Raised in a black home, if you talk back, they grab the belt. I was jumping house from house, you don't know how that made me feel. Two years later, grabbed the knife, I was ready to kill myself. You don't know shit about my life, stop saying that you care. What was you at when he was touching me? None of y'all was there. What was you at when my mother died? None of y'all was there. What was you at when I was hopeless? None of y'all was there. I used to have this spark in me. You see, they took that glow in me. Want me to tell you about my life without you even knowing me? I'm facing this world on my own, I ain't afraid to be alone. Mama died when I was 12, ever since then I had to be grown ain't no happy ending ain't no happiness for me to my uncle i want to rap he told me that was just a dream and dreams don't come true for black girls that look like me so therapist please tell me what do you see when you look at me do you see a future or do you see a curse i've been trying my best i always seem to do my worst my family don't love me my brother won't even hug me my sister been acting funny it's like ain't nobody for me like the world is out to get me it's like the world is out to get me as a black yeah, you know, this girl, she is uh, remarkable and, you know, she's uh, doing her videos and she's making money and all the above. But like she said, you 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 thought less of me. You never betted on me. You never thought that I was going to raise up, even though, you know, she still wants someone to love her. And, you know, it makes me cry. I love her so much. She's a Sagittarius. And, you know, Sagittarius are fighters, baby. And they always have good fortune. Somehow they always land on their feet anyway. You know, but the thing is, it is so important for us not to judge. And you have to see so much that ebony women go through. In fact, all women are going through it at this. But when you have brown skin, dark skin or black skin, it's it's harder, you know, because especially when you have your own race and your own nation of men who try to tear you down. I want a red bone. I like a light skin. I like pale skin. 
And what is that? Is that trying to help build her up or tear down her self-esteem? You choose other races and other nations of women to build them up while you work like a dog to tear down your own. That's some stupid, dumb nonsense. Playing for the other team, helping the other team to get points and to win while your team is at the bottom of the barrel. And then you wonder why black women don't want to submit to a black man because he don't know how to lead. He don't even know how to be loyal and have integrity for his own race and nation of women. What's up with that? Does that make sense to any of you? Let me end again with Grandpa. Come on, Grandpa. The black woman wouldn't be no hoe if a man wasn't no hoe. We made the black woman like the black woman is. We have sex with her friends. We have sex with her sisters. We're so disrespectful to us people. She got to put up with this shit because you're paying the bill. Our black sisters got to be the strongest woman it is on planet Earth. Why? She all by herself. She ain't got no man. A man don't know what to tell her. He can't talk to her. All a man is trying to do is have sex with her. She don't want to hear that. Especially after she and has some babies and things like that. And the black man is sorry. He's not helping the black woman. He ain't helping his mama. So the black woman got a real hard job in America. She's our backbone. Born black. They little boy ain't no man. They man ain't no man. They're out here all by themselves, struggling every day by themselves, trying to take care of this nigga here, his mama, by herself trying to take care of boys. My mama, all our mamas, they have a hard time and we don't even say thank you. We wrong. The black woman ain't wrong. The black woman wouldn't be no hoe if a man wasn't no hoe. We made the black woman like the black woman is. How can we disrespect the black woman? If it wasn't for the black woman, we wouldn't be here. The black woman would. Now, let me read some of the comments that Hay say. Uh, one person says, this is why elders are so important. Another person says, finally, a man who sees the truth. And then you have Carlos. He says, I truly got emotional hearing this. He says, I agree 100%. I promise to be a good and a better man to women, especially the black woman. Another person says, Farrakhan has been saying this for years. Teach them, elder. Another person says, I love black women. From infinity to infinity, infinity, they deserve so much better. Another person says he needs to own his own pon uh, podcast. I'll be listening to this man every day. Another person says, that's why I look up to my elders and I always respect them. Too bad some guys will never be able to understand any of this or what has been said. And it's true. Anyway, there you have it, my beautiful diamonds. And this is not only for black women. I don't mean to just put it to black women, but you got to understand, you know, light skin and pale skin in the world that we live in today, that is glorified, that is elevated, that is damn near worshiped. And yet when you have people who are melanated and it's not just black women or ebony women, it's melanated women, Indian women, Dominican women, uh, Eastern women, Jamaican women, Trinidad, I'm Trinidadian. You know what I mean? It's not just the American black woman. It's just melanated. Put it that way. And I don't mean to offend or make anyone feel disrespected or bullied or what have you. I'm merely speaking the facts and showing you the evidence. Twinkle, twinkle, twinkle.